Hi, I'm Bill Stiller. Uh, Kemp Kirsch of Two Wheeler Dealers let me use this shop today to show you how to mount some products, some Bariac products on your bike for bike packing. Uh, this is Tom Thorne, very good friend of mine. He's doing France, South Dakota this year. And this is the steed that he built to do our race. And it's pretty amazing. I can't believe how light it is. Titanium frame. Uh, bike bag dude uh, did the frame bag for him. But we're going to set bike, uh, we're going to set Tommy's bike up for bike packing. And we're going to put some Bariac products on it. So what we got here today is, uh, this is the new Bariac Expedition for 2018. You can see we, we actually made the space from here to here. Uh, you wind up being an, a half inch longer. Um, we also took out some supports in here and we still pass 150 pound stress test. Um, I don't recommend anyone carrying 150 pounds off their handlebars, but we want to build this in such a strong way that uh, if, if the cyclist has an accident or he hits a tree and stuff like that, we don't ever want failure because of our equipment. And uh, so I guess that's, that's my main concern whenever designing any products, is to build a product that is going to sustain uh, accidents. So um, anyway, so we're building a harness for this right now too. Uh, in conjunction with the uh, bike bag dude out of Australia. But anyway, we'll pull the seat clamps out here. What we use is a uh, 1032 screw. It's pretty common. And it's a number four Ellen wrench. Oops. Thank you, Tom. I'm going to pop the screws up. Now you can leave those in there. It's nice to do this when you have help. So, and on Tom's, we're not putting the um, carbon fiber bar ends. Um, if Tom wants to do that at a later time, we can do that. But uh, he's setting up more for bike packing uh, in rough terrain, and that position isn't uh, isn't used as much. So, why carry the extra weight of uh, of carbon fiber bar ends? So. So the important thing when you're mounting this here is to get the spacing even on both sides. And you see I have about the same amount of space on each side of his stem. I don't have it sucked up yet, but what I mean by the same amount of space on each side, if you look at the C-clamp, if you want to come down here, team, get really close in there, I like to have the gap on each side of the handlebar the same. And what I mean by that is so you don't want to tighten the back end down and then snug the front one up. What we want is we want visually to have the same amount of spacing on each side. And so what you're doing when you do that is you get the same amount of compression tension on both the front end and the back end of the Bariac rail. See there? Now if you look really close, you're going to see the same gap on each side. And I've done these a lot, so I'm just eyeballing what I think Tommy's going to be as far as the comfort is for the pitch on his bike. So I got the front one a little bit, so I'm going to back this one down just a hair, snug this one back up, get the tension even across both ends. And there it is. So that's it. It's all mounted, ready to go. Yeah, exactly to Torque Spec, Joe's Torque. Sorry. <laughs> if you want Torque Specs, check on Bariac.com. So, anyway, so Tommy brought a harness whip today, and that's what we're going to mount next. You see, I got the same amount of spacing on each side of the stem. And now we'll work on mounting the harness. So, uh, we're going to mount a harness on uh, Tommy's Bariac Expedition now. And so this is a harness made by Bike Bag Dude out of Australia. And so he uses just all Velcro and he has these capture straps. Um, I added these to his so I can mount quick release uh, a front bag on and I'll show you that a little bit later. Because a lot of people are running accessory bags. So first of all when I mount these I just mount them on loose just like you're seeing right now with the Bike Bag Dude. Put this on here. See, it's just sitting on here loose, just sit, hanging in place. Here, team, would you hold this? 
arms for me. So, kind of getting it. The big advantage of the Bariac, and this before I cover it up, I want to show you. So if you look, we'll lift Tommy's bike up a little bit. Look at the dip, the spacing in between his head tube. And so the big advantage is if you're using traditional bar rails or uh, bar bags, and you attach it on here, what you end up doing is you end up prying everything up against your bar and it creates uh, undue stress right here, which can create premature wearing. And also it can pinch your, your shift cable. So coming straight out of your shifter, it can be bent as much as 45 degrees, uh, 45 degrees or, or whatever, and that would cause your cable and your housing to prematurely wear out. So with the bar yak, it extends you out and you're not touching the head tube. You're not mounting anything to the head tube anymore. It's all off the front, front uh, uh, bar yak rail right here and then off the handlebar. And so, like I said, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna capture the handlebar like this here. Push this down. And you don't have to use a harness with a bar yak. You can just use straps and capture the front crossbar on the bar yak and then the handlebar just have and, and pull it in here. But we recommend using a harness for the fact that, especially if you're gonna run like a pack raft or something up front, um, it's less likely gonna to wear your, your boat or anything that rubs against it. If you're riding in really rough terrain and things are moving and shifting and you get some sand or debris or, or grit underneath there, um, you don't have to worry about that. So now once I kind of got it preliminary mounted, now I can come and I can capture it. And this is Kenda's. There's no buckles, no straps. I have never had one of his harnesses come loose. And all he's doing is Velcro. And then he has this two-stage capture. So we have this, and we have this, and we have this. And the likelihood of this coming loose, I've never ran it with something as heavy as running pack rafts. Uh, a sleeping bag in my tent all on the front bar, but for a typical uh, bike packing trip, this is amazing and extremely, extremely lightweight. But see how simple it was? And like I say, then we capture it with these capture straps right here. And so the way he has it right here, we can take our front bar roll bag, we can put it in here, and we can run it through and capture these straps. Right through there. Here. Then these are those little straps I was telling you about that you can get at Walmart. The little silicone rubber bands. And we use those on almost all of our stuff for capture straps. Come right here, run it through his loop. And the reason, like a, an official bar bag is so beneficial versus uh, somebody going and getting a dry bag is if you get a dry bag it won't have these loops in it and if you're in really really rough terrain I can tighten this strap up even more but if you're in really really rough terrain this can migrate and actually fall out of your harness um, but that's why these retention loops are so important on this harness so this is bike bag dude set up with his harness and his front bar bag and like I say, these little clips, that's something I do. Um, I don't have my front bar bag with, but Tommy's got one that's made by Relevate. And so I have these clips. You can buy these clips from Relevate Design. I buy them and I have them stitched onto all my harnesses, whether it's Relevate or uh, Bike Bag Dude. And well, this is made for the old style Relevate, so the spacing isn't quite the same. This will give you an idea. Oops. There. There. And the reason I like this is because it runs the exact same spacing all the time. And if I want to go anywhere, I can just push these two buttons and I can drop it off. So I also have capture clips on the back side and I can clip it in so this thing stays really, really steady. I just snap them in back here. I have other right back here. And I'm not gonna do that right now, adjust those all the way up. I just kinda of wanted to show you. But see how secure? There we go. 
So that is a bike bag dude harness and a bark bag dude uh, bar roll. The shape around this bar and set down a lot nicer and it also gives you suspension. So if you're riding on really gra bumpy gravel roads, this is actually floating and giving you suspension and taking out a little bit of the rumble out of the road. So anyway, so that's that idea. Um, it was inspired by um, the Iditarod Invitational. We needed something that would be durable in sub-zero temperatures. Uh, the adhesive that is used on this is rated for negative 40, and its tensile strength on this Velcro is, I think it's like uh, 15 pounds per square inch. And so it's, once you set it on there, she's pretty good. So, but anyway, so that's a few uh, products. And then we have our Garmin bracket, which is... This right here, this mounts on here, so if you have any of the Garmin Edge type products, you can mount this on here. And we build everything to kind of play nice together. And so if you want the armrest and you want the bar yak or the, the navigator bracket, they all play nice on the same arena. And this is actually drilled and tapped out. So we have uh, drills on the bottom. So you can, uh, with the same spacing as a, a standard water bottle holder so any accessories like a pump bracket to carry a battery or whatever can be mounted off of this so that's supposed like that there and that's all I gotta say about that <laughs> so, well I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, I've been bugged by a lot of people for a long time to do a video like this I, I don't this isn't my comfort zone um, I like taking people out on trips and teaching them that way but to stand in front of a camera uh, it's kind of uh, uh, makes me a little nervous. Um, probably before I close everything up, I should kind of show you um, the our Baryak uh, mule on a suspension fork. And so what we choose to do here is we ran it on the backside because this bike I use in really, really rocky terrain on really, really narrow trails. And so by doing it this way, um, if I'm running into rocks, um, it's kind of tucked in out of the way. And I, like I say, I'll typically run sleeping gear on one side and I'll run my cook stove on the other side. But you can kind of see it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. And then to kind of show you why the Baryak is designed, so in here I'm able to hide all the K-Lite lighting products. Inside here I have a sine wave inverter, I have my, my switch for high and low beam, and back here I have my charge switch. So I can switch to Garmin or to... Um, my headlamp just right there so everything fits nice and neat and we carry I like to carry a battery cache and I'll carry that back over here so my dyno hub is charging my battery bank my battery bank has passed through technology and so that is charging my Garmin everything's playing nice and I can sustain myself for days and days maybe weeks um, or like a month in in um, in Vietnam and Laos and Cambodia so anyway that's all I got to say about this um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to text or email me. I'm very approachable. Um, uh, again, thank you very much and have a great day.